Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on forces in two dimensions. The topic of this video is, what is equilibrium? We have two questions to answer today. What is exactly meant when we say an object is at equilibrium? And how do you mathematically analyze the forces acting upon an object at equilibrium? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When all the individual forces that act up on an object are balanced, we say that that object is in a state of equilibrium. If you notice the free body diagram above me, the up force and the down force appear to be balanced, and so do the right and the left force. Whenever an object's at equilibrium, we expect the following traits. First of all, by definition, the forces are balanced. That means oppositely directed forces are going to balance the effect up on each other. We sometimes say that all the forces add up to zero newtons, that is, the net force or vector sum of all the forces is zero newtons. This causes the object to have an acceleration of zero meters per second squared, which means that the object's velocity is constant. It's not necessarily zero, it could be, but the object, if it is moving, is moving with an unchanging velocity. You should be cautious when you read this definition because it said that all of the forces are balanced. It did not say that all the forces are equal. For instance, if you examine this diagram here, you'll notice that the up force and the right force are not equal to each other. Sure, the right force equals the left force, but all the forces are balanced, not necessarily equal to each other. A common physics lab involves hanging a one kilogram mass by two strings and using force scales to measure the tension in the strings. The resulting data are then analyzed to show that the object is at equilibrium. You see the situation shown above in a diagram. Now there are three forces acting up on the point where those three strings come together and the three forces are gravity down and then two tension forces that are at angles to the horizontal. Now we're going to measure the magnitude and direction of these forces and then analyze them. The direction will be expressed as is a counterclockwise angle of rotation from due east or, to the or from the right. Here's some sample data for forces A, B, and C. You see the magnitude and you see the direction. Now the point on the string where these three forces are acting upon is at rest and staying at rest, so we expect that it's a point that's at equilibrium. So as we do our analysis, we're expecting that the forces will come out to add up to zero newtons. The first part of our analysis is called a scaled vector diagram. Since the vector sum of all the forces is the net force, we would expect that if we added these three forces in head-to-tail fashion, that they would add up to zero newtons. That is, the vector sum or resultant of A plus B plus C would equal zero. So here's the first force, force A in the, in the second quadrant, force B in the first quadrant, and then force C, which was the force of gravity, directed straight down. When I do my scaled vector diagram, I'm going to add these forces in head-to-tail fashion. So here's force A, and where its arrowhead ends, I add force B, and where its arrowhead ends, I add force C. And what we notice is that arrowhead of C ends where the tail of A began, which tells us the resultant of A plus B plus C is equal to zero newtons. The second part of the analysis will involve the component method of vector addition. This is a common method to use whenever the vectors you're adding are at angles to the horizontal or the vertical. I like to use a table like this in order to organize my work. Now in the table I have a column for the x component and for the y component. I have to calculate these component val values. The fact that I have the counterclockwise angles from east makes the method quite easy. I'm going to go the magnitude of the vector times the cos sine of the angle to get the x component and the magnitude of the vector, the newton value, times the sine of the angle to get the y component. I can do this for every vector as long as I have the counterclockwise angle from east. So I show my work and I show the result of the calculations in terms of the magnitude and the direction of the component. The direction being left or right for the x components and up and down for the y components. When I'm done, I can sum up all the components. I can add my 3.2 newtons left, my 3.1 newtons right, and my zero newtons. And when I do, I get approximately zero newtons. Now I know it's not exactly zero newtons, but it's close enough for government work. I do the same thing for my y components, and again, I get nearly zero newtons. This analysis shows me that within the precision of our measuring to tools that we use, the vector sum of all the forces is zero newtons. 
A second common lab in a physics classroom involves the use of a force table or even a force board. You see a force table above me. A force table allows you to get values of the three vectors acting upon the center ring and to analyze them to see if the vector sum of the forces is zero. I'm going to represent these three forces by vectors A, B, and C. And when I add those three forces together in a head-to-tail method, what I end up getting is I end up getting a resultant of zero. You see it done right above me. The vector sum of all the forces of any object at equilibrium is zero newtons. Now I can just as easily take these three force values and add them up using the component method. And I would use my convenient table in order to list the components of X, the XY components of vectors A, B, and C. Here's the result of my work. You can study it to see how I did it using the cosine and sine functions. And in the bottom row, what you notice is that the vector sum of these three forces is zero newtons, exactly what we expect of an object at equilibrium. Now let's take this idea of equilibrium and vector components and apply it to a situation in which we have a massive object being hung by two ropes, wires, or cables. In the simplest case, if there are two wires and it's hanging symmetrically, what we know is that there'd be three forces acting upon the object. Two tension forces up and horizontally, and one force of gravity, the force of gravity being the mass of this object multiplied by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. If I were to focus on either one of these tension forces, such as the one on the right, I would recognize that there are two components, an X component and a Y component. When inspecting that Y component, I would expect, since it's the side on the triangle that's opposite theta, that it could be found by taking the hypotenuse of the triangle, the tension force, and multiplying by the sine of the angle, as shown by this equation. Now, since the sine is at equilibrium, I would expect that all the horizontal forces balance, that is, the X component of vector one, or tension one, equal the X component of the second tension force, and I would expect all the Y forces to balance as well. There's two up Y forces, each being a component of the tension force, and one down vertical force, that being the force of gravity. So I would say something like Fy1 plus Fy2 is equal to the force of gravity. Now since together these two Y components are balanced by the force of gravity, and since they are equal to one another, what I would expect that is that either one of these Y components is equal to one half of the gravity force. Now let's do a sign hanging example. And in this example, I know the mass of a sign, I know it's hanging from two cables, and I know the cables make an angle with one another of 62.8 degrees. And I want to calculate the tension in each one of those cables. So here's my force diagram showing the two tension forces that are angled relative to the horizontal, and then one downward force, the force of gravity. The first complication to the problem is the 62.8 degrees. That's the angle between the cables. That's not theta in the diagram. So to find theta, I use a little geometry. I say theta plus theta plus the 62.8 degrees must equal 180 degrees. And I can solve for theta, and it comes out to be 58.6 degrees. Now I can take the mass of the sine, 22.9 newtons, and multiply by 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and I can get the weight of the sign, or the down force of gravity. Now this down force has to be balanced by the two up forces, those up forces being the Y component of the force of tension. Though both Y components will be the same since the sign is hung symmetrically. So to calculate the Y component, I can take the down force of gravity and say it must be balanced by two of these ups, and each one must be half the strength of gravity. So I go one half times the 215.6, and I get the, tension, the Y component of the tension force, 107.8 newtons. Now that's the side on this triangle that's opposite the theta of 58.6 degrees. So now I can say that that Fy value is equal to the hypotenuse of that triangle, F tension, times the sine of theta. And now I can rearrange that equation to solve for tension and say F tension equal Fy divided divided by the sine of theta. Now I know Fy is 107.8 and theta is 58.6. I pull out my calculator and I solve for tension and it's 126 newtons. That's the tension force for the string on the left and the tension force for the string on the right. 
It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources. Each one can be found on our website, and you'll find links to each in the description section of this video. There's a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Any one of these things could be great next steps for making the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.